Hello and welcome. On this channel I create craft projects inspired by my stories and I share my writing process. Today I'm going to be putting together a wooden model gramophone and reading aloud a short story. I picked up this little craft kit a few months back. It's from a brand called Robotime and no, it's not sponsored. I bought this kit myself. I really love vintage objects and these little craft kits are fun to put together and I find them really relaxing. I started by laying out all the pieces and then just worked through the instructions. Everything needed comes with the kit and you don't need any extra tools. I kept all the wooden pieces in their structure sheets until I needed them and then just popped them out individually to use. Overall, I think the kit was very straightforward and the instructions were easy to read. I did end up having one or two breakages with some of the very small pieces and especially with the curved sections of the horn. However, I glued them back together and you'd never really know they were broken once the project was finished. You definitely need to be very gentle when working with these types of kits as the wood is thin and can break quite easily. This kit doesn't need any glue to assemble but it is handy to have some on hand just in case you accidentally break a piece and then you can fix it. It's best to take your time and enjoy the process. You do need some patience but as I said earlier, it can be relaxing and it can also be quite mindless in, in, in a good way. A bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle or knitting can be. So that's the project that I'm working on today. And now to turn to the story. Just in case you're new here, most of the videos I'm making on this channel combine some sort of craft project with a tiny short story that's inspired by the project. This is a way for me to bring my stories to life and to combine writing and crafting. I have lots of ideas for upcoming crafts and things to make and stories to write. I hope you enjoy this writing and crafts combo concept for these videos and will stick around to see more. Let's begin the story and afterwards I'll share a bit about some of the research and thoughts behind it. Ezekiel, a short story by Ida Williams. The lines of washing fluttered in the breeze. They crisscrossed each other, spanning across the street, a white canopy above the heads of people walking by. Ezekiel watched the bedsheets. They had wings like the seagulls he had seen on the ship. Leaning his head against the window pane, he wondered what would happen if they all turned into birds and flew away. Where would they go? Back home, maybe? Papa had said that this was their home now. His head hurt from the noise coming up from the street below. So many people calling and carriage wheels thumping. He missed their old stone cottage and the smell of wet green grass in the mornings. Everything was now strange and large around him. Ezekiel, go find your father next door. Tea's ready. Wearily, he got up off the end of the bed and clambered over the half-unpacked trunk that lay open on the floor. His mother was placing a loaf of bread and bowls of steaming stew on the makeshift table that sat in the middle of their one room. The twins were still asleep in their borrowed cradle. Being babies, the move hadn't bothered them. They could sleep anywhere. Out in the hall, Ezekiel looked around. It felt stuffy and smelled of old cooking and tobacco. Then the sound of soft music playing unexpectedly swelled around his ears. Many instruments joining together in harmony. A slow, sorrowful harmony. Picking up his shuffling feet, he trotted over to the half-open door and peered inside. Two men sat talking, their shoulders hunched over a small black stove. Looking up, his father smiled and beckoned Ezekiel over. Come on in, lad. Joseph, this is my boy. 
The older man had a bushy grey beard and patted the little boy on the head. They went back to their conversation, speaking of employment and wages. Ezekiel heard little of what they said as he crept past them and instantly found the source of the music. A beautiful wooden box and curved metal horn. Carvings of leaves and berries swept across the sides and running round and round was a black disc. The music was playing like magic, rising into the air from nowhere. He leaned down closer, his nose almost touching the spinning disc. For a moment he was spellbound and didn't hear his father calling for them to go to tea. The disc spun and spun. The music kept coming, note after note. Suddenly, he didn't miss the old cottage near the woods, or the green grass that smelled sweet in the early mornings. Here he had music. Music going on and on. The end. I began the writing process for the story today by thinking about Ellis Island, immigrants coming to America and the New York tenements, all of this set around the turn of the century. I had a few of these keywords in my head and then I went online to do a little bit of research into the setting for the story. I ended up spending quite a while on Pinterest looking at old photos of New York tenements. I get sucked into old photos really easily and I can end up browsing through hundreds at a time because they tell so many stories and then I'm looking at them and imagining who the people were and what they were doing. I never directly take a photo and then make up a story about the people photographed as they were real people with real lives and I feel that's invasive. However, I do love finding little bits of inspiration and seeing where those trails lead me. Some of the images that I really liked were the ones of the clotheslines hanging between the different tenement buildings and individual buildings might have wash days where everyone did their washing at once. So there are clusters of washing all hanging on the line at once across these streets. Households from this period generally would have had a wash day as the whole washing process would have taken all day sometimes to complete so they would have had to have set aside a whole day just for that one task for the household. I also looked at lots of street scenes and at how crowded and full of bustle the streets were and then finally I found some images of the interiors of some of the rooms and apartments. It's easy to get carried away researching and then have a massive amount of detail and information to put into the story, but I find it necessary to make sure that I balance the story with the research. Because if I jam-pack the story with every detail I found while researching, then the writing will become overloaded with description and then the heart of the story will get lost. I try to place enough detail to bring the scene to life but then also have enough room for the characters. And of course, with a longer story, I can add more words and more detail in. But for these videos, I try to keep the stories at about 400 words or so. That's the gramophone completed. Several parts of it move and the little drawer is a nice touch to the model. I did consider painting the gramophone or adding accents, but I do like the look of the natural wood, so I left it as is. Um, a question for everyone watching is do you like to make these types of model kits and do you have any designs that you'd like to try? Leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed the video and the story today. Check back next week to see what the next project is. In the meantime, you can find me on Instagram at Meadow Afternoon and you can see more of my work over on my website at meadowafternoon.com. Thank you for stopping by and see you next time.